Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Dignity. Bottom right corner, we have Sulky starting as the Yellow Zerg, as a swan of money here. Up right corner, we have Snow, aka Cariario, as the brown Protoss. This is going to be on Largo, so should be fast and furious, and could be particularly interesting between these two guys. I feel like you got Sulky, you have Soma, you have Hero, and Zerg land. As far as Protoss go, Best has been holding his own recently. And you really have best in snow, and the rest of the field seems everyone's talking about the Terrans, right? And it does. I've seen a lot of videos of Zergs lamenting, of Protosses lamenting, and it just does seem to be the era of Terran right this second. We'll see if there's the stereotypical resurgence that talk about how in the uh, the, pro, uh, in the fall Protoss tend to win championships. We'll see if that holds true for upcoming seasons of ASL overall, and if there is a Protoss resurgence. This is about, so I, I say this, I feel like I said that in previous matches where it's like, this is about as best a matchup as you can get. But it, it's true. This one is one of those ones where you expect high quality of play out of both these guys. Sulky, amazing Zerg player, Snow, I would say is the number one Protoss right this second. I think there are arguments for best, but really I, Snow best and I don't know who else I could even categorize. Like Stork is around and is feisty in the show matches, but not really in, in championships or top level play otherwise. Sulky, absolutely incredible, can do it all. More often than not, is just going with the straight up macro builds. And we are seeing an 11 Nexus on Largo of all maps in the dark. Ooh, wow. Again, it's he's not gonna pay for it here, it looks like, because we are seeing a 12th hatch opposite side. Spawning pool dropping. This could get scouted somewhat earlier than usual because it looks like Sulky is going to be able to position that Overlord over the natural. Necessitates a forge follow-up. But that was with zero information, just assuming that his opponent was going to go for a 12 hatch. And keep in mind, this is on Largo, which has much closer spawn points. So the rush distances are somewhat... Uh, smaller, although I think they're, they've been were reduced even further on Allegro, but they're still fairly small on Largo, if I recall. Photon cannon warping in. I should also, yes, I should also mention that Bisu's out there amongst the Protoss, and he's been, it's great to see his resurgence. Regardless, I don't best look like he might be in championship form. It doesn't seem like any of the top three Protoss at the moment are contenders for the championship yet. Six o'clock location, third base being grabbed upon noticing that Nexus, it looks like the extractor has already been dropped. However, in the probe, able to sneak in, should be able to walk right in to the main. Never mind. drone gonna go ahead and blockade for Solki, wants to try to deny as much information as possible. See if it repositions to the south. Some Zerglings now out on the hunt. Snow Single cannon to defend, does have that gateway up front. Assimilator warped in, three probes inside. I'll be curious to see what Snow does as far as a follow-up. Hiding the site, so spotted the Overlord on the high ground to make a push into the main, so instead has dropped the cybernetic score at the natural expansion. And we'll see if he can push this probe any place to get a read as far as whether it's going to be a Hydralisk which it looks like we are seeing 973-ish opener. We'll have to see it's, if that's the exact uh, drone count down the line. Fifth drone taking its way to the natural expansion. I think that six o'clock base was spotted. So Snow now just holding this probe. Wants to try to keep it alive to see when the Hydralisks are making their way towards the front. Second gas being grabbed. So it looks like it is going to be some sort of tech build here from Snow, but he is going to require the cannons to start. More Zerglings being produced. So we got six Zerglings and Snow drawing back. He did get a good look at the drone saturation here at the natural expansion. There's that characteristic seven. Having just the two right there and we'll see if it starts. Yeah, we are starting to, so it's just gonna be 972, a little bit more of a aggressive all inish build. Or is it? No, sorry, 973 and we'll see if it will have the recovery to the fourth drone to get that economic uh, difference. Stargate just finishing. No additional gateway floods, and there's only one Zealot currently on the front. Plus one weapons being upgraded, so wanted to go for more of an anti-air, and it, it's very possible 
that Snow just completely misread this opening build. Although that would shock me, to be honest, but he hasn't saved a lot of resources. He's just now dropping a second cannon. He sees the three... He's gonna see some Hydra spawn if he just keeps this probe alive a half second. Oh man, getting escorted out to not see the Hydra They're already making their way towards the front. And honestly, I wanted, wanted to see more cannons more rapidly. This is going to be a tough defense now. Sorry, there is a Zealot hidden up there to the top. So now that Corsair making its way out needs to get active to maybe pin some Hydralis back. This feels, so two additional cannons joining, but this feels very, very late as all the Hydralisks and Zerglings now streaming towards the front. And if Solki gets a move on, this is a very bustable front door. Looks like he's currently holding though, rather than engaging the, the cannon line on the rear and giving time for Snow to go ahead and establish some additional resources, it looks like. I don't know if, I think that plus one weapons might've been canceled. Corsair trying to do what it can, yeah. So cancellation to preserve some gas and resources. Now two additional cannons. This actually shocks me a little bit because looks like it is gonna be a fold back to hatcheries now. That was 973-ish start, which usually is something you wanna, there we go, now pulling the trigger, but maybe too little too late. The Zerg Link's completely expended. The probe's coming off the line. If he had gone a little bit earlier, even tested the front a little bit earlier, might have been able to wipe some, some of this out. And still, it's going to be a tough defense for snow overall. Additional cannons being dropped. Probe's doing a great job right on the wall. Two additional Hydralisks joining the carcass pool on the floor in front of the residue of that gateway. More cannons being morphed in. The probe's on standby if they need to get pulled. No additional hydros making the way, and it looks like the additional hatcheries have been dropped. Corsair is still active to go ahead and identify, so snow out of the woods now. Healthy probe count. A little bit, yeah, canceling that cannon, recognizing he's safe. Two additional gateways. Three additional gateways. Already has that Citadel Zune working on plus one weapons. That forge dropped as well. Massive gateway flood. Overlord's going to spot all of it for Sulky, so he's got the information he needs at the very least, and knows that he should be able to drone pretty heavily behind this. Evolution Chamber as well. Plus one weapons, because there's five Zealots, four of them... Sorry, three of them significantly damaged. He's got a lot of Hydralisks out on the front. And really, there's not a lot of threat from Snow, at least for a couple minutes. So a healthy drone count now and an additional macro hatchery being dropped at the six o'clock location, potentially to create a decent Sim City for a follow-up attack. Looks like a Templar archives being dropped at the natural expansion. Corsair killing an overlord somewhere. I'm not entirely sure which. I, I think that might've been an overlord sacrificing itself to get an eye on all of these gateways. But point being, that is a lot of gateways. So we're looking at uh, six gateways in the main. Corsair's remaining active, plus one weapons. Zelt leg speed is finished. Starting to move out. Sulky's already drawn some Hydralis back. Not a massive SimCity on his natural expansion. Not a massive one here at the six o'clock location as well, but there are a good number of Hydralisks starting to be produced to engage the Zealots. Question is, is, will it be enough and will they be in time? He's gonna, he's got a lot of territory to cover. At the very least, he's managed to keep an eye on their location and is gonna be able to pick off that Corsair. Overlord being stranded out on the front. I don't know if the Hydralisks can dedicate themselves to go ahead and press. I love the Zealot sneaking by to maybe deny an additional base or maybe even go for a run by should the Hydralisks over dedicate to one location or the other. But behind all this, Zelt's hanging out near that third, and this looks like, ooh, a Dark Templar out as well. Potentially, this is enough of a threat where Snow can feel somewhat comfortable behind the energy that is going to be harvested, or should be momentarily available, with those High Templar. And have a, a decent shot at grabbing a third. Instead, though, he looks like he wants to wait for that observatory to have that tech just in case there's that lurker follow-up. 20 supply lead for snow overall. Lurker tech being morphed, it looks like. Speed also being upgraded for those overlords. 
Especially after, I think, a Dark Templar recognized on the field. I don't think that Dark Templar was able to breach any place or get really anything accomplished. Love the Scourge in the air. One, to knock down any additional Corsair. Might be a signal to go for a tech switch here. Potentially. So if they walk into the main, see a complete lack of cannons and Corsair. Kind of a, a dangerous situation. A lot of Hydralis on the ground, but like five mules could wreak havoc here with the tech switch. Dark Templar still trying to peek into the 6 o'clock location, finding nothing. A lot of Hydralisks grouping up on the front. Four High Templar full of Psystorm now. But yeah, that my eyes would... Yeah, so there, there we're seeing that Mutalist swap. We're going to need an Archon at least to help defend it. We've got a good number of Dragoons with plus one weapons working on range. Just two Corsairs here otherwise. And now Snow going to have some trouble... One, protecting his High Templar, but two, he's got to worry about maybe his main trying to warp in a cannon now. Looks like just now building an additional Corsair. Mutalisks out. I'm almost wondering if that was a, a bait or if he just recognized the scenario. He's like, okay, yeah, I've been spotted with a lack of air, so now let me go ahead and fill that in. Still feel like it's worth it. The Corsairs, look at the anticipation here. Corsairs already in position. Scourge still survive. Looks like there's only a single hit. Hydralis pushing against that army near that third, but able to get all the way into the main and get a good amount of probes. That's actually evening up the overall worker count. Danger Town for Snow overall. Still, it's just been three bases overall for Sulky opposite side. He hasn't grabbed anything additional, but starting to move out, trying to hit a Psy Storm on the Mutalisks, mostly missing. And Psy Storms are valuable. That's what gives you map control here. 20 supply lead for Snow, big army. Marching out mid-map, it looks like Solki is trying to grab bottom left and use the Hydralisk grouping as a shield. He does not have that plus two weapons as of yet, which is usually where those Hydralisks start looking very, very scary, particularly in picking off High Templar. Overlord's getting drawn back. The Mulus able to swing back with those Corsair again out of position. One High Templar nearby. Great size storm, obliterating the Hydralisk line. So I think Solki was hoping to get some free probes Focus fired on that cannon. And a nice play there from Snow, just sneaking that High Templar in to wipe out the air threat. Worker count near even. Hydralisks regrouping and mirroring that army. It looks like Snow is starting to engage and grab that third base. Plus two weapons a ways off. But we do have another base grab here in that bottom left-hand corner. For Sulky. Good number of Zerglings here. Snow starting to barrel forward. A sizable army, very cohesive. Lurkers grouping up. Observers right there, and they're pretty bunched. This is Psy Storm bait. Zerglings, ooh, Zerglings getting annihilated. The Lurkers eating a lot of that Psy Storm. Not the best engagement for Sulky at all. His Lurkers getting completely obliterated. Trying to cycle, he's not actually picking off the High Templar. And you can even see the kill count on these High Templars significant. Sulky now swarming forward with the rest of his army, but Snow has honestly had some great exchanges. Let's see if he can keep it as a good exchange, though, because it looks like I take it back. Sulky starting to punch through, plus two weapons just now finishing. Starting to wipe out that Dragoon line. I just have plus one offense, plus one army, or armor. So now being driven back. Might need to have some reinforcements there to go ahead and defend that third. What I thought was an uh, amazing initial engagement, the macro just turning on for Sulky to follow. Single Lurker left. The Hydralis continuing to press forward. Usually Hydralis with these plus two weapons shred through these Dragoons fairly efficiently without any Psy Storm or other support. High Templar moseying in just a few shades of energy away from Psy Storm. Now have energy. Two mostly empty side storms, and this is starting to look like a panic moment for Snow. Might end up losing his third. And gonna call GG right there. So where I thought there was some amazing... So I take it back. Where I thought that was a great engagement initially for Snow, uh, Sulky able to turn around and just continue to macro and press forward into it. In fact, I want to go ahead and do a rewind into that fight. If I can find the speed up and get to it a little bit too far away there as 
might be a little bit too early. Yeah, we're still waiting on that third to get established. Going into it, there was a huge supply lead for Snow, and then coming out the exit of it, there was just absolutely nothing for him. Despite what I thought were some brilliant side storms. So here we go. 20 supply lead for Snow at the start of this. Some lurkers being morphed to engage. Mutalists get wiped out. And maybe that's just the strength of that swing of that plus two weapons. I'm going to keep an eye on this Hydralisk so we can see. So right now, sizable supply lead. Still, rest of that army grouping up. Should have made a mental note of when that time period was. And right here, yeah, supply count starting to get dangerously close. And here's that engagement. Plus two weapons still not engaged. If you keep an eye there. Oh, never mind. Just some lur lurkers actually getting a lot of damage, and the zealots not even engaging in this attack. It looks like they were hold positioning the entire time. I was paying attention to the wrong thing. Zealots not, yeah, still on hold position. And really not there they moved. So I was looking at the side storms, assuming the rest would be okay, but it looks like the zealots just weren't active. But still, after this, decent supply lead for Snow, but he just leaves his army stranded in the middle of the map here and doesn't draw it back. And then it just starts getting hunted and you just start seeing that supply count fill from this point on. Just unrelenting. Foot on the gas macro. There's that trade point. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Didn't mind the analysis and whiff of analysis of that army engagement. Thank you for listening.